What's up, everybody? This is your man, DJ Square Knot from the DJ Information Group. And we got a super guest on tonight. This man, like he has already said, he connects dots. You down, you want to connect with some people in the industry. You want to get to really know some people who can really make some things change. Some, some shifters. This is the man that you want to definitely talk to. Who am I talking about? The renowned industry plug, Lump. What's up, my man? Man, I'm blessed, man. And thank you for that intro, bro. Like, it's a beautiful thing to me because I'll tell you why. You, you guys are DJs. One of my best friends who really gave me my start in terms of street stuff was uh, DJ Screw. Robert L. Davis Jr. That was my homeboy. You know, whether you liked him, whether you hated him, he literally popularized the genre of music. And you understood just how entrenched and how deep a DJ's reach is because of what he was able to do with two turntables. He didn't just slow records down. If you ever heard him and listen to any of his tapes, you'll see that he had two instrumentals sometimes and one acapella. He was able to blend and do things at regular speed and then come back through and dump it through a four track or eight track and make it slow down and chop it and do at regular speed. He was a beast. But my point is simply this. DJ is the heartbeat. Without the heartbeat, <laughs> you really ain't got too much in terms of the beat of the music. So I'm humbled, man. And Sid and Lisa, I'm going to be honest with you. Lisa and I share an affiliation that's endeared to me with my sister. And Sid has just always been consistently up in this game, quiet about it, lets his turntable speak for him. He's one of them cats that literally... He lets his content speak for him. He ain't bragging. He ain't patting himself on the back. But boy, when he gets into a groove, he can call out records that people forget about. So these two people, Lisa, and I know what Lisa does and what her foundation is teaching kids how to spin. I just pay attention, man. It's like I always tell myself, you're either going to pay attention or you're going to have to pay somebody. So those two people are real renowned to me. So I much respect to Sid, much respect to Lisa. Thank you guys for the platform because you guys can be doing anything else, talking to anybody else, and to a cat who you don't really know too much about or hear too much about, but you guys will take the time, I'm humble. Appreciate that, my brother. Appreciate that. And uh, that's a good segue to um, what we hear, because I've heard a lot about you over these sad past several months, a um, couple months, um, you know, where Sed has talked about you. And then once Sed was talking about you, just uh, Lisa was in one night and started talking the conversation. And I was like, well, they done kicked us out because – they, they talking back and forth to the point. They were so excited about talking about you. And I was like, you know, sitting back, I said, I got to, I started looking up. I said, I got to, I got to learn about, I got to learn about who this cat is. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And uh, then it was like, man, you, you know, we got to get him on. Said was like, we got to get him on. We got to get him on. And I said, hey, let him know. We can definitely have him on. You know, Flash is here. We all talked about it as a group. We're like, hey, bring him on. We invite everybody. And that's the key to the group itself because um, Flash, when he started this group, the one thing that he said that he wanted to have a true DJ information group um, where, because sure. we were, we're all in other groups where you see all the egos, you see everything, you see yeah, man. what you got and what he got and all that kind of stuff. But when you're yeah. here, it's about teaching, it's about learning, it's about sharing, it's about uplifting each other and uplifting and, and learning more about the culture and the history, you know, and you plug right into that, you know. Man, you, know, you just described hip hop, literally. Yeah, <laughs> yes, being being plugged into some of the greats, you know. And so I was like, hey, this is going to be a great deal here to be able to, and an honor, truly an honor, uh, to be able to 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 chat with you and really get to know you and uh, and learn from you. So in learning from you, um, tell us who Lump is. Man, Orion Lumpkin is a knucklehead from South Central California who got transplanted to Houston, Texas in 1981 because of my gang affiliation. And uh, 11 years old and was bad as hell. Two young parents, mom 15, dad 17. They made a deal when I turned 10 or 11 that I would go stay with my dad because my mom couldn't teach me how to be a man. My dad was a revolutionary fought against the Black Panthers and us when he found out they had been infiltrated with COINTELPRO and with drugs, uh, real deep in the Swahili, that whole Black movement. And uh, 
he's a man's man, you know, young dad, but he was a man's man. And <clears throat> what happened was he, uh, my auntie introduced him to Christ. He accepted Christ. God put it on his heart to come south to get a good, good job. And he got that. The only catch was when my mom and my dad made that deal, it was in California, it was in LA. But my mom knew, even though they weren't together, she knew that if she had not let my let me come with my dad, my dad would have stayed in LA, would probably would have killed both of them. So she relented and said, Hey, look, I trust you taking best move of my life, square not like, I'll be honest with you, bro, it saved my life. Because I think about all my partners who I was affiliated and active with, they're gone, whether it be through natural causes, whether it be through gangbanging, whether it be through drug dealing, or whether it be through living, being in the wrong spot at the right time, <laughs> it happened. So Came here, started playing football. It was you funny because when we first moved here, I moved here from LA. I lived in the South Park, home of Scarface, uh, who I would meet a couple of years later. Left South Park. We moved out to the country in Waller. You probably never heard of Waller, but I'm quite sure all of you guys have heard of Prairie View. Prairie View A&M is right there in Waller County. And uh, got a chance to meet a lot of good people. And then my dad finally got another house in Missouri City small town outside of Houston, kind of like Inglewood is the LA. And we had some superstars in my school. We had Thurman Thomas, Isaiah Washington. Mm. We had Brad Jordan, AKA Mr. Scarface. We had Zero. Uh, we had Tony Draper who went there. TJ Ford came out of there. We had some folks come out of Willow Ridge, man. So I was happened to go to that school and play football. Graduated from there, went to University of Houston. But all this time, I had fallen in love with music. My mom was a big Angela Bofield fan, mm -hmm. a big Donny Hathaway fan. <clears throat> and when I got to college at the University of Houston, I was in the cars. So I went by this car stereo shop entitled Surround by Sound. And there's a line on one of <laughs> Scarface's record when he says, got him up with Floyd and Floyd in front of me, some dope. Floyd Clark, I can say this now, no, no snitching, because my homeboy had done his time. And he told me that in the interviews, I could talk about it. <clears throat> he, uh, he took me in, he raised me. I had some static at home with my mom's dad and his wife, but uh, Floyd raised me from college on. I met him at the car stereo shop, bugging him, wanting to do a car show. And at 18 years old, I showed KBXX in Houston, the big radio station here with Steve Nice, GT, Reg in Effect, Luscious Ice, uh, Cracker Nuts. I showed them how to do the car show at 18, done just giving up all my, my game because I love car shows. And from that point forward, from like 89, 90, when the box started doing car shows, they, and Sid can attest to this, they can do the car show now when they were doing it before Dub took over. They were making $2 million before the show even started. That all started from an 18-year-old kid who showed them how to do their first car show. Wow. But Floyd is the one who introduced me to the music um, Brad went to high school with me and I, he, I and Tony Draper and uh, Brad always said he was going to be the coldest one, but he had a Jerry curl on and a bomber jacket beating on tables. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he said he was going to be the coldest and he did just that. And as a matter of fact, some years later, he told me I didn't know what I was doing. And he was right. Uh, he said, man, you know what you're doing? When Floyd pushed me into the record business because he owned part of a record company, they needed management. And I started managing this cat named Bam. Uh, from the Killer Clan, affiliated with street military, legendary groups here. And at the same time, I come to find out a cat who I was gangbanging with in LA named Charles Temple. You guys know him as Big Boy from Big Boy Records. And if you don't know him, you know his artist. He's the one who introduced the world of Mystical. When mm -hmm. Mystical would Here I Go on that first album he had with the Southern shirt on with over, the, over the background, with Here I Go, I'm out that boot camp click and all of that. We started working Mystical. My partner, Big D, Daryl Jacobs, who's from New Jersey, who stayed here in Houston, he's the one who taught me how to do street promotions because when I was managing BAM, I knew I needed help with street promotions. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know nothing about it. All I knew is, is that I can go into a store and talk to somebody and figure out the matrix and just the information on, this record ain't selling no more. My record is new. I need this space in the window. I ain't got no money, so I just learned how to make friends with people. Learned how to do displays. Once I learned how to do displays, I ran into Big D and Big D took me in and showed me the ropes at club, showed me the ropes. And bro, come to find out, I realized I wasn't a manager, but I was a street promoter. Started doing that. Tony Draper saw the hustle 
And Tony Draper, my partner from high school, gave me my first account with Suave House through Relativity. A rich kid. So I got the Suave House, I got the Relativity account, so I got a chance to work records like Digging in the Crates. I got a chance to work Fat Joe. Of course, everything on Suave House. So I got a chance to do all of that. So it was a beautiful thing, man. And that's how I got my feet wet in street promotions. And Charles Temple, who, who was big boy, needed some help with Mystical. I found him by way of a poster. I saw his name at the bottom of it, called it. And bro, it was wild because he said, hey man, I need some help, what you doing? And I told him I was doing street promotions and big D structured the contract to where we make $4,000 a month between he and I. And Square Not, that's how I started. After Tony Draper gave me that, Chuck gave me that. Chuck gave me the independent side, Tony Draper gave me the major label side. After that, bro, I had every major label with the exception of Def Jam and Atlantic. I had like 18 accounts, bro, making money. I didn't have to do no more street stuff because I was making money independently. And I told the Lord, I was like, Lord, if you give me an honest hustle, I'll stay out of the streets. I'll stay out of the streets if you give me an honest hustle. I didn't know who I was dealing with, but God gave me my wish. And as a result, I was able to <clears throat> do street promotions, make a really good living. That first year I made like 36 racks, which ain't too bad for a college graduate from the University of Houston on his first job. But then after that, I never made under six figures, man. I had fun, bro. But full circle, going back to the DJs, I had independent records. So I had to make friends with DJs who were frowned upon, friends at the other radio stations. I had to make DJ friends. But what I found out was these dudes could spin at KPTY, which is 104.9, a party. And these cats wound up going to some real cool, popular nightclubs. And by me being a friend and servicing them records that the, record, that the radio stations wouldn't give them, I wound up making some great relationships. And it was time for artists to come to town because, like I said, I had all the labels except for two. I made sure I took care of every DJ, even the kid who was whack, because I knew if, over time he was going to get better. So I knew if I can make some friends, shit, I could, I could corner the market. And that's exactly what happened. I tell the cat, hey, look here, dude. I know y'all get tired of street promoters and, and record reps coming to y'all saying, hey, look, I got this record and it's jamming. No, I wouldn't do that. Hey, look, I got this record. It's whack as hell, but could you figure out a way to get it in? Could you play another instrumental over the acapella? I tried to help my DJ, you know, but that's the legend of Lump. My legend was not so much that I was, I had the best records. I just had the best attitude and I always try to make friends and I always try to make sure that when artists came to town, instead of pushing the cats out the way and only giving the cats on the radio the credit, I gave the cats in the streets and in the clubs who truly started my records, I make sure they had the highlight. And the artists appreciated that from Common to Wyclef to Casey and JoJo to 50 Cent to Beyonce. Hell, I went to London with Beyonce on their first rip and she asked me to be their road manager. Me and my dumb ass said, no, I'm just going to work on this on the level promotions thing. We're still great friends to this day, but I just wonder how my life would have been different if I would have took that job. But, you know, who knows, bro? Who knows? That's all right, though, because you still have that connection. So, Oh, most definitely. That, As a matter of fact, my oldest baby, closed, you know? my oldest girl, my oldest daughter, when I went to London, I found out her mother was pregnant. And my oldest daughter, and she hates it, but she loves it. Her name is Kayla Beyonce Lumpkin. And when she found out, when Beyonce found out, I named my baby Beyonce. She cried like a baby, bro. She loves my little, she hadn't seen her in years because my little girl's now about to graduate from college from Prairie View in architecture. But B is like, whenever she sees me, whenever Kelly sees me, they stop, they recognize me. <clears throat> and it's just, it's beautiful for me because I never was the brown nose type. I always wanted my work to speak for me and uh, have true authentic relationships. Those are, that's another key thing, a good, solid relationship. And like you said, when Beyonce sees you, when Kelly see you, they recognize you and they don't recognize you just because, oh, you're somebody that they just know. They recognize you because they have respect for you. And Uh, that's that's a a two-way street. Yeah, that's a a a two-way street. Um, And that's a beautiful thing, man. And let me tell you, that story right there, just in in itself, man, uh, answers a lot of questions. Um, and now, of course, when you, when you started hitting the music industry and you started working with all these different artists, um, what, where did you find yourself, um, 
Was there any particular sector of the music that you found yourself leaning towards more in terms of the artists uh, once you got really settled in? Yeah, man, I liked the A&R because it was a trick though, because backstory on Scarface, little Troy isn't the first one to have him. My partner Floyd, the same Floyd that I talked to you about is the one who took Brad. Brad used to smoke Primos. This is a true story. He used to be on some heavy drugs. Brad was a real, people forget, Scarface was a real thug. Like, ain't no if, buts, or what's on that story. But my homeboy Floyd raised him. Floyd and Rob Iron. But Floyd was the man with the break road. Rob was the guy with the business. And Floyd got Brad clean. Floyd had him first. They recorded two records, and I still got him. One of these days, I'm going to talk to, to Rob and see if I can let y'all get them records. But anyway, and that's when he was still going by DJ Action. But Floyd had Brad first. So when Brad would go to the studio, again, we went to high school together, and there's another cat who went to high school with us. His name is Crazy C. He was the one who did the remix for uh, uh, for the Method Man. M-E-T-H-O-D, man, with the Ain't No Future in Your Front and Beat. Mm -hmm. And um, it was another beat in there, but Crazy C is the one who redid that beat. Crazy C used to always be at this place called Digital Services, which was Rap a Lot's home recording studio. So by me being aligned with Brad and me knowing him from high school and Crazy C being in the studio and being an in-house producer for Rap a Lot, he did the stuff for Big Mello. Um, I was able to be in the studio and I got a chance to meet N.O. Joe and Mike Dean. N.O. Joe, man, look, never seen a man cry, pushing weight, uh, just about all of uh, the last album, Deeply Rooted. You know, Deeply Rooted, I actually took the picture for that album cover for Brad for Deeply Rooted. Thankful, humble about that. Two of my most popular pictures in my photography have been the picture of DJ Screw with his hat backwards with his ring showing up, the Just Ogani, and the Deeply Rooted album cover. Two of them. <laughs> Just blessed, man. Like I said, right place, right time, nothing but God. But in that time, Square Not, I was able to see how the studio worked, and I, I had an ear for making it right. I would have suggestions, like when Cash Money recorded their first High Boys album, they recorded at that same place at Digital Services. And I was able to chip in and just give little hints and pointers. And then when Sylvia gave me an opportunity, Sylvia Rome wanted to hire me because I was affiliated with Cash Money working their records. She wanted to sign them first. But my point is just simply... The part of the business to answer your question that I like the most is being not in the studio because I hate the studio, but I like being in the studio when they're creating and I can give my input just because on the flip side, I wind up working records at radio and I knew how they work. I knew what they were listening for. I knew how to call out the research hooks work. I also being cool with the DJs, knew the DJs needed records that were reactionary. They didn't need nothing that was going to stop the flow. They didn't need nothing that was going to clear the dance floor. They needed impact records. So my whole thing was produce an album full of singles. If I could just get an album full of singles, I would be all right. So I've always been on the a &R side. So when Sylvia gave me my job in 2000, that was her thing. She said, you have more contacts in your phone from an a and R's perspective than my whole a and department. Let's put them to use. <clears throat> so what wound up happening was she, when she got ready to hire me, she, um, she, what she did was this. <clears throat> she asked me about Kane and Abel. Now, mind you, Kane and Abel are my homeboys. New Orleans Cats, Twins, On No Limit. They went gold on No Limit. Let's just be real. P bought them records. That record, they had the cool singles, but they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough power on that album to get gold. I said, Sylvia, you about to shoot a video on a on the group that ain't really. I said, these are my homeboys, but from a business perspective, I'm not gonna hate on them. I'm just saying, let them get the right record because the record you about to shoot this video to, that ain't it. And she just looked at me and she said, why didn't my people tell you that? Tell me that. I said, Ms. Ron, I, I can't answer that question. I said, but if you ask me, I'm not gonna sit up here and lie to you and then sit back and tell you I told you so later on. That's what got me my shot and that's what kept me in the A&R department. And Marilyn Bob, at a and he also a and the Missy Projects, the Buster Projects, um, Fabs, Lil Mo, cause all of those were there at the time. Yolanda Adams was at Electra at that time. So, my love for music, me listening to music, understanding what it worked at in the streets, how we looked in the club, what was moving at retail, how women would listen to listening stations. If it didn't move within the first 15 seconds, they were going to the next, because women have expendable money. When me and you going to the store to go buy a record, at that time when we were buying records, we bought what we wanted. We weren't trying to hear nothing else. We weren't trying to take no suggestions, but a woman, 
If I'm in the store putting up a display and I catch a woman who's really asking, and then she'll ask me, what, what do you think is hot? Women move the posts of the club. Women move the posts of the stores. <laughs> women make the world go around. Yes. And that's just the reality of it. So I learned how to listen to a woman and watch a woman's reaction when it came to records. And when that happened, it made me a better rep. So that's why I love that part. So when I started messing with music, I wanted to be in the side of it, not to live in the studio, but to hear something immediately and know that it was going to work and then give it to the right. Like I got a record right now, a cat named Zion out of ATL. It's a beautiful record. It's called Naked. I just talked to Darius, who's Jay Holiday's a and r and he, when, Jay, when Jay left uh, Capitol, Darius went with Jay. <clears throat> Jay got a bad rap on a bunch of silly shit, but Jay got a record right now that's out of this world. He got a project. But just a few seconds ago, I just sent Darius this record that Zion wrote. Now, Zion could take this record and make it a number one hit, but bruh, if Jay Holiday sings this record the way I think he's going to sing it, it's going to get him back to where Bed and Suffocate left off. It's just that it's that hot. So that's what, that's the part of the business that I like being in. Wow. That's, hey, that's hot there. And then on top of that, you know, with all the different uh, connections there, you know, and like you mentioned, Missy, you know, very creative. She um, one of the best to ever do it. Yeah, one of the best to ever do it. And, you know, in working with her, um, what was that like to just, you know, to see that creativity come to fruition? Truthfully, I didn't get a chance to see most of Missy's stuff because her and Tim work in the lab. Mm -hmm. When Tim and Missy worked together, only thing you would see is the results. Uh -huh. So when Tweet came up to the office, it was like, bam. When Missy's projects came up, it was like, bam. Bro, Missy is just, I'll say this. Sylvia Rome, when you think about this, just put everything else down you know about music. Think about Busta and think about Missy. Mm -hmm. Think about Fat Dudes. Sylvia Rohn took them behind that secret curtain, told them how to do this, told them how to stay out of the bullshit, showed them how to stay hold on to the bread, how to get the publishing, how to handle your business. Look at Buster, look at Missy, and look at Fab 20 years ago, and look at him right now today. Mm -hmm. They all started at the University of Sylvia Rohn. Periodpointblank.com. That's just the reality of it. Sylvia took care of her people. Think about this. Buster and Missy had those million dollar videos on the same label. Yeah. It only, it took a black woman to do that. Cause you know, I mean, you know, bro, I, I hate to piss anybody off that listens to this, but the white boys ain't doing that, bro. The white boys wasn't doing that back then. So for me, I'm very straightforward. I'm very black and white. I'm very period, no gray. It is what it is because when I was at the bottom, when I had the pistol in my mouth in 2008, push or pulling the trigger because I had lost everything the people who came and got me were the ones who looked like me, not the ones who I actually made all that money for. So mm -hmm. I have no problem being very transparent with people about my journey because my journey was crazy, mm -hmm. but I'm thankful to God that I'm still here. But again, not to do, not to pivot, but Sylvia say, man, and the story with Sylvia and I, when I left Electra is because a cat named Al Branch who was cool with Rockefeller. I think he works at rock racing, rock nation right now. He lied on me. Now, I'm a nonviolent brother today. Now, back in the day, I was a little rough. <laughs> but if I ever see our branch, we're going to have a conversation or either he can get an open hand slap. One thing I don't play in this industry is this, man. I'm not tough, but I'm tough on people with my character. You're not going to question my character and you're not going to lie on me because if all you have in this industry is your word, it ain't about your money, it ain't about your accomplishments, it's your word. And it's your word and your last hit and how you treated people. It's a four hour climb to the top, but it's a four second fall to the bottom. I've been in both places and you got to treat people well in both places because you never know when you're going to be on top and you never know when God will allow you to hit the bottom. So when people lie and question my character and play with me, I do my best to stop it and correct it and get an understanding because the Bible says, and all you're getting, get an understanding. And in this business, like you said, on those other calls, you have a lot of inflated egos. But if, if I tell the true story about some of these cats, I would probably be looked at like a snitch, but I, I can never do it because of my code is set up different. But these cats are normal just like us, we're not. They are super normal like us. They have normal problems like we have. The only difference is the money. Hmm. And the money tells us who you really are. Money only amplifies who you are. That's it. If you're a knucklehead, you're just a knucklehead with money. 
if you're a good dude, you're a good dude with money. But if you're a buster, you're a buster with money. If you're a liar, you're a liar with money. It's just that simple. Hey, that that's facts. That, <clears throat> that is definite facts. So um, it's obvious you are really ingrained into the to into the, the, the industry there. But um, through the whole time, one of the things that I've really been liking as you've been speaking is you've been talking about God and you've been talking about, you know, what you, 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 God, you made up, asked God for something, you promised him. And you, like you say, you kept your word on that. Um, and you've moved forward. So, um, was that the only turning point where you promised, you know, if, if God presented you with your wish, uh, that would do it? Or was there some other things that really amplified that for you? Man, no, no, I really do. Um, in reality, I, uh, I was just thankful that God gave me a shot. And then my partner came and got me. My partner, Derek Curtis, he came and got me. Because it was some rough times, man. And, and for a while, I hated music. I won't say I hated it. I fell out of life. I always loved it, but I ain't always like it. Gotcha. And when I, what I realized was <clears throat> when I first got into the business, I loved the music. Somebody said something to me one day, and I'm not going to say his name because y'all know him. <laughs> but he said, hey, Lump, <clears throat> they don't pay us to like records. They pay us to work records. And that's when I realized it went from being a hobby to a business. And I only began to work records as singles. So I wasn't able to really get a full listen to the, to the yeah, I listened to the hours, but I run through them, but I was listening to them from the perspective of what's going to be the next single, where is this going to play, how is this going to fit. I didn't get a chance to listen to it for the love of music. See, with you and the DJs here, you guys put a record on, and it changes people's modes. See, music is one of the few things that can enter your body without permission. And if somebody's having a bad day, <laughs> it, it can roll out. But God literally, because I got the big head at points, and two times he knocked it all out of my hand. When you got an 820 Beacon score, you got a couple of hundred thousand dollars put up in the bank uh, at a young age. It's hard to listen to somebody, bro. It's like <clears throat> my homeboy used to say, it's hard to be big when little got you by the toe. You know, but God has a way of humbling you when you're his. And he'll knock it out your hands if you're not careful because, and it's not to hurt you. It's just to remind you that you don't run nothing. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'm the cussing preacher before the cussing preacher. I'm seminary trained and degree. I love the Lord with my whole heart, but I'm Peter. I'm not Paul. I'm going to cut you. And if the Lord want to put your ear back on, that's between you and him. <laughs> I'm who I am all the time. In the pulpit, out of the pulpit. I'm not going to change because I can't be hypocritical, nor can I be double-minded. But yes, indeed, God is the only one who kept me. My, all right. My partner got me straight. And, uh, and that was that. You know, that, that, and you know what, I, what I, I got out of that too, is that you're real. You're, a oh, yeah. you know what I mean? And that's the way it is. And you're, Hey, when it comes to you, don't play games. You are about the biz. You are about, you know, helping people. Um, and you love God. You're a man. Of God. Oh yeah. All no the doubt. Same, all no the doubt. same deal. And that's a beautiful thing, man. Um, and let me tell you, if we had a whole bunch more of you, like, like you, Woo, just imagine what this world would be like, bro. <laughs> you know, it gets better one day at a time, one person at a time, one podcast like this at a time. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, um, you mentioned about music and, and I, and how it helps people. And I, we all have had these conversations, but on numerous shirts that I wear, um, because I truly believe this and it's ingrained in my fabric of who I am. I always say that music is therapy. And music yeah, is that yeah. one thing that, you know, you can present to someone. Um, just like you say, it enters the body without, without permission, where, you know, you can present this to someone, you can play this music for someone, and someone who is having a bad day or just needs to get away from whatever they're experiencing, or they just want something new, you are that, the DJ is that center focal point where that's coming from. And you're providing that, you're providing that service, you're providing that, that experience for that particular moment. And I always tell DJs to recognize just how important your job is. 
you know, right. very, very important that you recognize how, how important that is to you, uh, to, to people that are around you and never forget that. And by that being the case, always be prepared to do your job because that is what it is. You know, yep, you're right. come to you, when agree. approach you when they say, Hey, here's the deal. Like you say, you're coming in, you're servicing and you say, Hey man, this record ain't the joint. But you know what? See what you can do with it, you know, and, and yeah. that's where the DJ comes in and says, you know what? I'm going to turn this into something that will reach some people. And at the yeah. same time, you know, you come, they come back and say, yo, Lump, check this out. This is what I've done. And from that, you can work with it. You got something yeah. you can work with. The DJ has something to work with. And then that partnership is right there. That's that partnership. That's that relationship. The bond that's continuing to grow. Yeah, that's, true. that's really, really beautiful. Man, yeah. I tell you, you got me floored, man, with all the stuff that you done shared, man. I really appreciate you sharing. Um, no, that's all good, man. I'm gonna give you my I'm gonna give you my story that people really know me by is the one, the Cash Money story. At 26 years old, I introduced Wendy Day to Baby and Slim, <clears throat> uh, working their records. Like I told you, in New Orleans, working for Big Boy, working for No Limit, and working for Cash Money. But when Pete found out I was working for Cash Money, he was like, "Man, you got to make a choice," which was cool. I chose to roll with Cash Money. I knew Slim and Baby. Again, Chuck, my homeboy Chuck, who uh, who had Big Boy Records, who had uh, he had two business partners, Leroy Edwards and uh, Rob Shaw, but they had Mystical Partners in Crime, G Slim, Black Menace, Tim Smooth, the Ghetto Twins, Insane, Sporty T. Man, they had a lot of acts. And Chuck, Chuck, people think about No Limit and they think about Cash Money, but without Big Boy making the type of money that he made. He opened the door and put a lot of grease on it for cash money and no limit if you really do your research. But I introduced Wendy Day to Baby and Slim. This is my lesson in that. <clears throat> they uh, promised me both. Hey, we're going to take care of you. But I didn't get that on paper. So eventually, <clears throat> that didn't happen for me, the one of them. And the only reason why Wendy got paid is because Bumpy Knuckles basically told Baby, hey, look, bro, you ain't never got to, I ain't never got to come to New Orleans, but you've always got to come to New York, make it right with her. But Wendy didn't keep a gangster with me. But I learned something. You only get what you negotiated on notarized legal documents for court. Other than that, regular agreements, yeah, try to keep, try to prove that if you want to. <laughs> so I just tell people, man, look, if you got something tied to an act, Get in and writing, especially up front when everybody's smiling and laughing. Don't wait till everybody gets mad and pissed off, but in the front, get it handled. If you got studio time, people are going to do records with you. Get them to sign. Get you some simple agreements. That's what your manager's for. Get simple agreements. Get the understanding up front. Because if you get the understanding up front, people won't forget how to divide in the end. Because people do change when the money comes. And if they don't, I guarantee you, every DJ on here right now can tell me a story about how somebody, how some club promoter, Basically told him they ain't made no money that night. And uh, at the end of the night, it, you know, he done walked out the club with a bankroll and you done got stuck with just a deposit. Mm -hmm. So I just tell people, get it up front, get it right the first time. That way you ain't got to go back and mess with it no more. Me and Baby, Baby and I are still cool. Slim and I are still cool. And Wendy and I, we really haven't talked, but we got an understanding because she got on a podcast one day and tried to figure out how she got introduced to Cash Money. And she didn't know I was on the show. And I normally don't say too much, but sometimes I got bad days. And that day was a bad day. I was like, Wendy, don't do that. And she was like, oh, yeah, it was Lump. It wasn't Hump. It was Lump who introduced me. And I'm not here to bash anybody, but I'm just here to let people know. You got to treat people right when ain't nobody else looking. That's the time you get credit for me for treating folks right. right. And everybody in the industry knows what I did for them. And it's cool. It's just that I don't have the monetary side of it. But here's my thing. I don't think God blessed me with that money at the time, even though I was used to having street money, that legitimate money at that time probably would have gave me such an arrogance that I wasn't able to handle it. And God knew that I couldn't. So it just didn't happen. But now I can build a bridge for somebody else. Hey man, when you're in the studio, you get an understanding with somebody, production, whether it be publishing, whether it be writing, it's still, which is still publishing, you can get an understanding. If you want to get somebody, if somebody says, hey, let me give you some points on the back end or whatever a point override is or how to set up publishing companies, how to set up your record company, how to get the structure right, how to do an LLC, how to do your minutes to make sure that everything is tied together, how to pay taxes, get an accountant, 
those are the things that that experience taught me. And those are the things that I try to build a bridge for other people. That is, you know, you, you meant you brought up another good point. And um, we were talking about that in the group as well. And that is paperwork, making sure that your paperwork, you know, cause it's all fun and it's all fun and games on the front side when performances, verbal, all that stuff and everything. But on that back end, that business end, <laughs> you gotta have that squared away. Cause if you don't have that squared away, you can screw yourself. Yeah, man. And yeah. A, a lot of artists have done it. And then they, they you know, and when, later on in life, they get it. They're quite upset about it. So, um, Thank you for sharing that as well. Thank oh, you. It's all good. Yes. It's all good, man. So, of course, I could sit here and really dig in and keep talking to you, but we got several uh, DJs on here. Uh, okay. Would definitely like to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Um, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just call them out one by one, um, mm -hmm. and then ask you a question and give you an opportunity to answer. Uh, and share whatever it is uh, related to that particular question. Okay, that's um, all good. I'm, I'm going to start off with our primary admin, the the, the man who uh, started this group. Uh, that's DJ Rod Flash. And uh, he all might right. still be at work, but he may have a chance to chime in real quick. Okay. Okay, it looks like he might still be busy. So now I'm going to take you up to your man. Um DJ man. Big said, what's up? Man, what's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, Sid? Yeah, you know I'm out here smoking one, man. Yeah, I see you in the truck. <laughs> you know, you know, up stuff. What's going on, Yeah, dog? I'm good, man. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for coming on, what man. You said? <laughs> <laughs> no, you you know, what's up? He said they're going to square not. They what's up? That's all of the details. What's, what's going on? That's my business Good. partner, man. That's my homeboy from New Orleans. That's one of the cats who I met in New Orleans. Yeah. What's going on, Sid? Sid, un uh -huh. unmute yourself. Oh. I think he yeah, yeah, I'm getting phone calls during the middle of this interview. <laughs> it's all good. But anyway, man, I just want to say thank you for coming on, man. Oh, can you still hear me? Yeah. Man, that's easy, bro. Oh, that's no, easy, bro. We got you, Sid. We can hear you. All right. I want to say for coming on, man. I really appreciate that. Oh man, and, um, on, bro. you know, I I noticed at a, a particular time in H Town, you had kind of just like disappeared off the streets, and I was always wondering what happened to Lump, cause you know, before I started the DJing thing, I was uh, you know, in the streets and partying and all this kind of stuff, and I've explained it to these people, man. And it's just good to see you back, and I mean. Man. You know, we still got that love and respect for you, man. You know, I'ma always respect you. Bro, and that's last Friday. Bro. I got yeah, to tell you, I said it before DJ I left, look man. You make DJ look no too doubt. easy, bro. You make everybody think you put in the game. Appreciate it, man. But yeah, square night last Friday, man. This man got with me and we huddled up, man, and we prayed. You know, because I lost a lot of family members in the last yeah, month. Yeah, bro, man, and, and I, I, that really. I'm still praying for really on that one right there, bro. That's that's a lot of loss. Boogie done lost people. I done lost people. This 2020 yeah. is such monkey balls, bro. Yeah, no doubt, bad, man. Bro. No doubt, man. And just to hear you tell your story on here, man, because like I said, I've known you forever, but we just really didn't get that close and personal because you know how big Houston is. And just to hear you talk, man. Like I say, it's much love for me, much respect for me, man. Man, and look, I appreciate you pushing me to do this, man. And once we get this Code Nix thing jumping, bro, uh, all three of us to get on here. Actually, all four of us, me, Big Baby, Walt, um, and Boogie, bro, because it, it, you get ready to see it. I don't really want to talk about it, real truth be told, because my business partner is like, hey, if we about that action, let's just show people what we got. Because everybody talking about what they're going to do, what they can do. And we've learned a lot over the past two years. We had some ups and we had some downs. But what I'm learning is, is that end of the day, it still goes back to this. You got to have a hot record. You got to have a DJ that believe in you. You got to have a crowd that's going to tell you the truth. Yeah. That's what we need. So said, square not, and all, Lisa, we, we need y'all. Like, it ain't no if, buts, or what's on that. We need y'all. You can do all of the internet stations and all of that, and they try to do all the syndication. But if you're not getting into the community and getting into this like you do, said. 
bro, it's all in vain, bro. Yeah, so we appreciate y'all, bro. Heavy Empire, we appreciate you. On the level, we appreciate you, baby. Like, I'm not saying that because it sounds good. I'm saying that because that's how we got started. Yeah. No doubt, man. I don't want to take up too much time because we got some other people on here, man. I want them to hear about, you know, the South and the West because you represent both areas, man. You know, oh, I'm yeah, always definitely. about the South, so the it's south time West, we get bro. somebody on here from the South. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, who else on here from the South? My man Dooley on here. He from the H. He been up to the shop a couple of times with me. Hey, okay, man. okay. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. So now the next one, I'm going to call, of course, you know I got to call her. DJ Lisa Love. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Unmute yourself. Hey, look. What's going on, girl? Yo, man, I just want to just, um, just tell you how much I appreciate you as a person. And like, and a lot of what you said was true. Like, you got to be who you are all the time. And you got to be kind to people because you never know where you're going to end up, who you're going to run into. And, and on the strength of how I was as a Philly DJ with Brock and that whole organization there, when I moved to H-Town and the, I told them I knew Brock and they talked and the love that Brock had for me, man, it may it may um lump open his arms to me and he pulled me in his um in his um his record pools organization and he told me to come down there. I met I actually was connected through his sister and through Brock. But he told me come through. When he came when I came through, he blessed me with all the records I had missed all the weeks that I wasn't even living in Houston. And from then on he took care of me every week until I left. I was in Houston five months. I felt like I was there for for years. And this man Looked out for me, connected me with radio DJ dude, and got me to be in that radio in that radio station. But you know, their hands is tied and controlled. But he made it so I could be there with what was the DJ name? The little pretty boy. Uh, who in the hell was that? Man, I mean, I got old, niece. I'm 50. Yeah, I, I forgot his name too. But um, he got me to be going to the um, and I became friends with that DJ. I forgot his name. I ain't seen him since I've been gone. But this man Lump took care of me and. And, and the friendship that we built, like, from then to just now, you're talking about 18 years now we've been friends. Literally, yeah. Yeah, and this man has showed me love consistently, and he never forgot about me, even though I left left um H-Town and, you know, moved back to Philly and stuff. He still stayed in touch with me. He still remained my friend. And and you you got to just be, be who you are, be pure, and be kind, and be respectful because you don't know your journey your journey god put you in your journey and along the way Boy, you don't need people that dude who just jumped on this call is the one who was with me when everybody else walked out you hear me left the job making six figures because i made a mistake listening to somebody and throughout that time a lot of people who said they was down they left me you hear so you you figure out who's who and what's what yeah <clears throat> you know you, you like slim from cash money used to talk, tell me all the time you figure out who your friends are in sickness and, and, and when you get some money. When you got some money or when you don't have no money, you find out who's who and what's what. Some people, some people will sit next to you just to see you fall. Yep. And and laugh. Good all yourself. along, man. And I love you, man. And um, I wish you nothing but continued success. And I'm just glad to be your friend. Glad to, <laughs> glad to know you, man. I love you. Man, and we coming to Philly, too, because Boogie wants to <laughs> drop. I'll probably be one of these football games, so... My business partner, he he be trying to get, he be going to like all the stadiums. I think he done been to just about all of them. So, but we coming to Philly when this coronavirus shit slow slow down. We gonna we gonna we gonna roll out. Let me know, cause I live in New York now. I moved to New York once I retired from that job. You know what I mean? Okay, okay. Yeah, yo, coming to Philly ain't nothing but a two and a half hour ride. I come there for you, man. Yeah. I love Boogie, you, man. So, Boogie be serious about traveling, and I ain't got no <laughs> problem with it either. I just like traveling. I done got old. So I'll come to your town now and take a tourist thing. Like, that's what Listen, I'm there it is. There it is, man. You just be easy, man. I love you, all right? Love you back. All right. All right. So my next DJ, I'm going to stay down in uh, the corridor with Big Sed and I'll bring <laughs> you uh, DJ Big Dooley. What's up, Lump? What's up, dude? How you doing, bro? All right. And I don't have a question. I just want to tell you, keep keep um, keep up the success. And I want to meet you in person one day. I oh, probably, we gonna meet, bro. Like I ain't I just talking. Remember. This ain't on no internet talking. Like me and my business partners, we coming to each one of these towns because we need help everywhere, bro. We trying to build friends. 
if it's some money we can spend with you to help you with what you got going on in terms of a budget with a club, I, bro, I understand old school promotions and how it works, bro. And I just like good people. And for y'all to still be trying to get your craft better by being on these calls, I know that you did serious. So, bro, bro, Barry, like, we, I'm good, bro. Like, whatever you need, and Lisa will tell you, I'm, I'm going to try my best to make it happen. And if I can't do it, I'm going to tell you, hey, dog, I can't do that. But what if I can do it, I'm going to do it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. And thank you, brother. All right. So we got uh, DJI95. I always say he uh, is the DJ that goes up and down the eastern seaboard. Damn. Salute, 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 salute. Um, I, have, I have no questions. Um, it's an honor to hear your stories. Just let me know what the music industry is really about. And I appreciate talking to you. I like that shirt too, bro. <laughs> if you got a 3x let me know send me your cash app because i need you to get me one of them right there look at that shirt. Hey, lump lump you're gonna have to send him some remixes man we got to work on his remixes man five and below five and below go to five and below that's where i got this shirt from five and below five, five and below <laughs> hey, 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 lump. hey lump. i'll make you a shirt like that i'll make you one like that <laughs> wow, my homeboy just told me where he got. Don't even worry about it, homeboy. I just figured it out. We good to go. <laughs> hey, look, look. Yeah. I'll make you one like that. No, don't do that, Lisa. I got it. Don't even don't waste. I, I want a Lisa Love t-shirt. I don't want that. Hey, Les, I got you, man. <laughs> you gotta you make got the, the right color. You gotta be the right color now. You said three X. You said three X. Okay. Yeah, just don't make no whole lot of red in it. I'm still kind of different on my red. No red in it, please. What's no your red. favorite color? What's your favorite color? I'm sorry. Blue, 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 navy blue. You got it. You got it. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. All right. So now we got DJ Joe Storm. What's up? Unmute yourself, bro. Unmute, unmute, unmute. What's up, brother? Man, I'm blessed, bro. Man. I like to hear a brother, especially a black man, speak about God, man. Oh, man. For real. Only way I made it, homie. Only way I made it. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, just to hear your upbringing, you know, I understand. You know, we, we never had gangs in b more, but, you know. Well, you know Baltimore is just, y'all different, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah y'all yeah. real different, bro. I don't, the wire made me not want to play with Baltimore, homie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and be honest with you, bro. Man, don't don't let it don't let it scare you, man. You come up here, you good anywhere. It scared me, but it damn sure made me raise up my ghetto antennas. That's for damn sure. <laughs> I can dig it. I can dig it. Man, it's just good to hear. Um, it's good to hear your story, and it's sure. good that you know you're able to drop yeah. the knowledge, and you're still going. You know, a lot of times I see these unsung shows and. It's a good ending, but you know, they always had those crash and burn situations. Yeah. You know, you never had really a crash and burn. It was on to another blessing. For real. You know, so keep doing what you're doing, brother. Um, Thank you, man. You do the same, bro. Yeah. Yes. I need to come to be more and get some of that seafood. Y'all got some crabs. I'll be seeing that. I'm a fat yeah. boy, so I done lost a bunch of weight, but I still <laughs> got an inner fat boy on me. So I'm coming up there to eat them crabs. I just need the crab crack them that little time. I'm coming to eat all that. Man, let me know when you touch the city. Oh, okay? no, I will. I'm not going to leave until I let y'all know. Salute, my friend. Salute to you too, bro. All right. So um, we got DJ Miss Official. She came on. Um, uh, she was driving, but I guess she's not driving at the moment. So what's up? What's going on? How you doing, it's nice man? To... Doing right? Yeah, I'm doing good. Doing good. Trying to stay warm in this New York weather, but you know. So New York? Yeah, yeah. I'm okay. about thirty minutes. I'm about thirty minutes from uh, Lisa. Okay. Yeah. So I got a lot I of hear... friends in New York, man. A lot of my partners, Eric Parler at Dev Jam. Um, yeah, I'm in uh, Newburgh, right by the uh, military base. Yeah, right by the military oh. base. Oh, oh, you over there with the guns at? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you Thank know, you just take great... some time out your day though, just to hear what a nothing head Negro from California got to say. I appreciate you. Of course, of course. Thank you for telling your story, and it's great to hear about you because I hear Lisa talk about you all the time. So, <laughs> you know, appreciate you coming on. Stop and... talking about that ugly boy. It's all good. <laughs> well, I appreciate you for coming on, but uh, 
Good talking to you. Thank you, ma'am. I really do appreciate you. Like, I mean that with everything, because again, it takes a lot for people who are usually running everything to get on a call and share. You know what I'm saying? So y'all the life of the party. Y'all the plug of the party. Y'all keep it going and introduce us to new stuff. So I just appreciate y'all taking the time. We appreciate you, man. Most definitely. Most definitely. We got DJ Michael E. I don't know if he's still at work at the moment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm still I'm at work. work. I'm actually driving right now, so I'm off camera. But, hey, I, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, Lump. And I'm glad to hear that you've been rescued from the streets, man. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. You helping people by telling your story. And I, I appreciate it. And everybody on here appreciates you. And I just hope that you continue to do your thing and stay blessed. Man, and I will, man. And thank you, bro. And if you be looking at dudes like that on that picture you got on there when they come up there requesting the records, I know you don't get too many requests. I like that, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's love from Detroit. Oh, that's why. Okay. It's hard. All right. right. Detroit. Uh, Sir T. T the Pimp. I mean, I'm sorry. T the Pimp. Who else is in Detroit? I got a couple of partners in I know Trick Trick, real Trick 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 and Peanut. I know them well. Like those are my partners. I work their records. Good deal. Good deal. Hey, much success to you. Stay blessed, brother. You too, brother. Keep making that money too, bro. Yes, sir. We got DJ Danny T. I don't know if he's sitting there right now. I know he popped in. Can y'all hear me? But I'll give him a chance. Give him a chance here for a couple seconds. All right. It looks like DJ Rod Flash, he's able to communicate now. What's up? Yo, salute, Lump. What's going on, Mr. You Flash? You is the reason. You, you the type of person that I am really started to group for, like where people you know the people behind the scene. There's a lot of stuff goes on behind the scene that a lot of people won't know and will not ever know because everybody worry about who that superstar is, but <laughs> People got to remember who made that superstar is the ones behind the scenes. And yeah, my business partner talk about that all the time, bro. You just hit the nail on the head, bro. People don't, you know, it's just time for us to start telling the stories because when you let other people tell the story, they sure leave out the bad part. But me, I'm going to tell the good and the bad. That's what's up. But that's it. All right. So, man, let me tell you. I, like I say, again, I'm extremely uh, honored to finally get a chance to meet you and, and talk to you, man. And uh, with what you've shared, if there's nothing that we don't learn um, from you, you know, like, and I'll tap into what Flash was saying. The people on the back make the front, make the ones in the front do what they're doing. And, and they need to and we need more, more of you to come out and actually be able to say, hey, this is the way it really is. Because, again, I've seen artists, they talk about everything, but they forget about the people that was behind them. You know why? Because they have selective amnesia on purpose. <laughs> because the people who can actually tell the real story, it's not always polished, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are the people who keep you grounded. Yeah, you know, it's like I'm a selfish dude, bro. Like at the end of the day, I know I'm selfish, but I, I'm around people who teach me that I don't have to be that way. And I was selfish because I was the only child for 17 years, for 18 years. So even though I had my sister, she wasn't in the house with me. So I had to learn certain things because I was just always it was about me. So I get it. But as I've gotten older, I've tried my best to come out of it. And I bend over backwards now. And then sometimes when folks don't recognize it, I get aggravated. But I have to realize that people used to see me a certain way and it takes a lifetime to kind of change that you know the journey is the destination you know what i'm saying so but that's the reason why most folks don't want you around because they they know the beginning it was kind of sketchy you know before they can get their teeth fixed and get their hair combed and cut on a regular basis they don't want nobody reminding them of that bro and that's how come a lot of those artists don't like people telling their stories bro. but the real ones will because you just never know man i realized that transparency is one of the keys to get people to break through and once i started being transparent you can't eminem me you know i'm gonna eminem myself you ain't gonna be able to eight my me i'm gonna tell you how it is how it was and how i wanted to be and even the mistakes that i made i own all of them you know i own them i hear that there's some ugly ones too bro i ain't here to just make it seem like it was all polished square not i, I made some some doozy bro 
But you know what? I, I like the fact that it's all real, you know. And when you when you when you're keeping it real, you don't have to go back and cover it up with something else yeah, that's old, false, yeah. for yeah. you know what I'm saying. So that that makes it really good because I always say, I'm not gonna lie to you, and I'm reason I'm not gonna lie to you because I only want to have to say it one time. That's it, bro. No. That makes sense too. I'm st I'm still in that. I'm gonna give you credit the first two times. The third time, I'm not gonna give you no credit. There you go. There you go. That way, I don't have to worry about it, um, and we're gonna move forth with it. And I, I really like the other thing that you said. And a lot of artists, I think they, I think you should print some T-shirts up and give them to them when you know artists start getting these big heads. And that is, it takes four. It may take you four years to get up to the top, but it only takes four seconds to fall. That's it, man. And some somewhere you need to put like a hashtag or something in there with that because. They need to realize that they need to be humble all the time. Yeah, because life has a way of giving it back to you. And sometimes oh, yeah. it ain't good. It's, it might be good for you, but it ain't going to be good to you. And that's for sure. That's indeed it. That's indeed I'm a it. living witness to that one. I feel you on that. Well, like I say, this has been great, man. I, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I, and I oh, guess no. the uh, rest of the DJs, um, they have gotten their questions answered. But... Um, I just want to say it like this, you know, in terms in my closing here with you. Mm -hmm. Again, we appreciate you for accepting the invite, man, and coming on and just really uh, getting with us. Um, at some point, we will connect with you because from my understanding, uh, to, in talking to Sed, Sed was saying that he was going to connect with you and then uh, there would be some conversation about getting with Scarface. Yeah, and, most definitely. Uh, Brad will do it, man. He's in, a, he's in a good position now, man. You know, he scared me at the top of the year. I didn't think my homeboy was going to make it. He had a look on his face. He FaceTimed me and didn't say a word. And he said, hey, man, this corona is real. And he'd had some other medical issues. And he ain't got to a point where he put music all the way down. Mm. And he didn't want to record no more. He never desired for it. But now his kidneys are functioning slightly better than what they were. My business partner, Derek, he tells him, he coaches him because my business partner goes through a similar situation with dialysis. And he's been telling him face, hey, man, do it this way. Hey, man, do it that way. Case in point, my partner had a birthday party uh, this past weekend, Friday and Saturday. Face don't stay out late no more, man. Face and I are the same age. I think I'm a little bit older than him. But, man, I watched Brad Jordan sit out there and play dominoes until it was time to go home about 2 o'clock in the morning. And he's making music. And he's got a new genre of music that he's doing. I can't talk too much about it, but when I tell you he's getting ready to shock the world again, and he's ready to talk about it now because Face is really, he's a private guy. He don't really, he doesn't really, uh, he don't say too much, bro. Like, that's not his thing, you know. <clears throat> but, yeah, said said is right. Like, we got to get a legend on here. 30 years in the game, platinum independent, platinum in the group, made platinum records with artists at Dev Jam South as an executive, and bro survived a bunch of storms and trials, and he's never changed. All he's ever done is grow and evolve. So I would, I, you know, I'm just glad that Sid thought about face, you know, and he'll do it, bro. And he's straightforward, bro. And his yeses are yeses, and his noes are noes. And that's just, that's Brad Jordan. I love that boy right there. And I'm biased. I think he's one of the goats. I mean, your your favorite rapper, he's in their he's in their, in their top three or five. So yeah, yeah. I think he's there. Most that's just me. Most definitely. Most definitely. And so in my closing, one of the questions I always ask everyone that comes through. And you've kind of answered it a little bit, but I want to make sure that, that it gets reiterated, um, being that we're all here and we hear it, and then from there, we can just go forward. And that is, what homework do you have for us? My only homework is this. Let's go back to the early days on breaking these records. If we think the record needs a little work, play the acapella over somebody else's instrument. Give them a verse that week. Second week, give them two verses on another acapella. Then go back to the original record. In other words, let's just start breaking records again and not giving these radio DJs a shot at doing it. Because what happens a lot of times is we play a lot of these records, they all sound alike, and we always complain about how they, how they sound. So as DJs, as disc jockeys, not DJs, but a disc jockey is just that, one who jockeys disc. Why don't we give these new dudes a shot that actually have music that can compete Let's, let's try to help them out a little bit more. That's my only thing. I'm for the independent artist, man, because independence is how I started because I couldn't get no major labels at first. Like I told you at the beginning, 
my first one was Tony Draper. Before Tony Draper, I had to work Big Boy, which was an independent. Cash Money was an independent. I worked a lot of independent records because the other cats had all of the major labels. And let's get these, these independent record labels. Let's try to build with them and then show them. Like, hey, look, this is how you talk to DJs. This is how you approach DJs. Because so many of them come at y'all wrong. They just do. So why don't we try to help make the next acts? And then not only that, grow with them and teach them. Hey, look, bro, if I help you out right here down the line, man, don't start acting funny with me. If we get that kind of understanding up front, I think down the line, it'll make the community a whole lot stronger. So that's my only homework, man. It's just, let's just try to build some real executives and let's try to get some real artists. And then look, as they begin to trust you, you could tell them like, hey, look, dog, that ain't gonna work. That record right there that you're trying to push ain't gonna work and this is why. As opposed to them getting it from somebody cold that they don't know and they think that they hate them. So I think your homework ought to be, just take it back to the old days, take it back to the old way of doing it. And that's literally listening to records and giving them a shot. We had to tell a DJ that was close to us. He had a thing on his, he had a sticker on his computer said, I don't take requests. Really? Now, trying to get your request at 11 o'clock when you got a packed club, I get it. But man, we, we got to do better. That's all. I hear that. And that makes, uh, that's some good food for thought there. Um, and we will definitely take heed to that for sure. As a matter of fact, I-95, he was putting up two thumbs because he loves that. <laughs> uh, and if, uh, and we, if we had DJ Silent Professor in here, he would be another one. They really love to do remixes and things, so that's their thing. Bruh, and sure. you know what? That's a lot of money in that. I might be able to help y'all get some placements. So yeah, let's, <laughs> let's go to work. Yes, indeed. That's good. So I'm going to close it out like this from everything that I've gotten from you. And I'm going to do this like this. A great guy, a man, a real man, a man of God, a teacher, industry connected, who is willing to help and drops real jewels. My man, thank you, thank you, thank you. We man, really salute appreciate y'all, you. Bro. Salute. And, and I mean that. You, man. Love it, man. Thank y'all for, I'm humbled and I'm honored. You. Man, said, Lisa, thank you. Square now, I feel like I got somebody else. All of y'all, the Rob Flash, the Danny T, the Michael Lee, the Joe Storm. To Ms. Official, DJ95, uh, Mr. Barry, thank y'all. That's all I can tell you is thank you, man. Thank you. You, you family, man. So thank you, brother. Any, anytime, anytime you, you feel like coming in or whatever, you know, you're always invited. And, and there's going to be three more of us. There's yeah. a whole crew of us with Heavy Empire. So when we come, boy, we're going to come and have some fun. Come on. <laughs> so come on. I'll let y'all know what it is when we come. Before we get there, we can plan it out. So... I ain't stepping on nobody's toes. We can have some fun, go break a meal. I'm going to smoke some cigars. I'm going to smoke a bunch oh, of cigars, know. and I'm going to smoke a bunch more. So Hey, well, sad to tell you, when it comes to the cigar style, I'm there with that for sure. All right, well, it's, it's good money then. <laughs> yes, good indeed. Money. Yes, indeed. So we'll be ready for that, no problem. Um, All right, Doc. Y'all be careful, man. I'm just going in for this cleaning up. Gotcha, gotcha. And just let us know whenever you need us, man, we're here. Bless y'all, right, man. Y'all be safe. Have a good night, man. Oh, no. Take care. Uh, love you, man. Love you. Take care. All right. All right, man. Thanks, man. Thank y'all. <laughs>